Being a kid in the in the early two thousands, I grew up with shows from the sixties, seventies, eighties, and nineties, and even the early two thousands. I was born in nineteen ninety seven. I had a great childhood. I live in in the hall in Florida and still live there up to day. I happen to be a 22 year old woman who watched movies whenever I had nothing else to do. Well, on the top of that, uh, on the top of that, I happen to be a fan of Hanna Barbera cartoons. I grew up watching them as a kid. So did my parents, my older brother, who is now 4, 24, born in 1995. The Hanna Barbera cartoon. The Hanna Barbera cartoons. Everyone in the family, including myself, had grown up with the shows they have. The shows we all watch are The Flintstones, The Jetsons, Yogi Bear, etc. But one of our most favorite shows is Scooby Doo. My family and I watched multiple Scooby Doo shows and movies since the seventies to two thousand ten. The reason we wa- the reason for that being the fact that Scooby Doo shows and movies now to be this day to 2019 it's just not the same as we all remember the best Scooby-Doo movie that I watched so many times as I liked is Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island this time the monsters are real the movie is about Scooby and Sam go- all going to Moonstar Island this is in Louisiana Louisiana to be filled with zombies and other fucked up things happen while the gang stay there I happened to see an early version of Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island back in 2017. It all happened in April, a month after my 20th birthday. It was April 8th, when I was in my car driving around the spring in Tennessee, Florida. Tennessee, Hall, Florida. I was looking for an apartment for my brother, who will be renting for when he goes to college. When he's going to college, he will be with the other college students. And everything was included in what some in rent and all that. Where's my rent? <laughs> and all that. I was out, as I was driving, I spot a coffee shop, so I decided to stop and grab a cup of coffee. As I got out of the car and walked inside the coffee shop, I grabbed a cup of coffee and a donut. As I headed back to my car, I was looking to my left side to see a man around my age who parking his car. He noticed me as I looked at him. He looked at me with a smile on his face as he spoke. Well, isn't today a nice day? He asked me. Yeah, I replied. I replied nervously. How was your day? I asked him. Really good. What brings you here today? The man asked me. My name is Otto. I live in here. I live here in Jackson, Florida. I see. What brings you here, Otto? I asked Otto as he lost as he lost his car and walked away to me. To see the family that I have down here. I thought to get a cup of coffee. Otto replied. Soon we got in conversation about things we like. When, when I mentioned that, the, that I like Scooby Doo, we talked more about the detail about what Scooby Doo movie was my favorite. I mentioned Zombie Island to him. He looked at me when Bly was a was his it was his favorite movie too. I tried to get on DVD from Amazon, but when I got the DVD, it didn't work. I had to use the, I I used the movie on VHS, but when my VCR broke down, I I said to Otto. Then I also mentioned that I was looking for. For the movie everywhere, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Have you tried the iTunes store on your phone? Otto asked me. I do have an iPhone 7 at the time, and I didn't have I didn't use iTunes all that much. I replied. I'm but I'm willing to try. Otto gave me an iTunes car which has twenty five dollars on it. iTunes have a lot of good stuff. Google Play is in my favor for some reason. I replied. Uh, for some reason. Otto replied, as I opened my car, Otto looked at me with a smile. Search out Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island when you get home, he said to me. You should be able to find it there. When I got back to my house, my, my brother David greeted me home. Gave me, he gave me a hug as I returned the hug, him the hug. Found any luck? David asked me. Yeah, there's an apartment available for rent for college students. I replied, my, my brother, I booked you to see the landlord for next week. And it's on like 10. All right. Thanks, Ella. They replied to me as I had my coffee and then went to my bedroom around. It was around 5 p.m. and my parents were working at the time. So I went to my bedroom and sat down on my bed. I went to the iTunes store on my phone and redeemed my iTunes store credit, which I had $3 in, in, in total since I saved up 5 bucks from the last time I used the iTunes store. Then I searched up Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island and I waited for a minute for resu- uh, search results. When I found Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, the movie on the list, I noticed 
below the movie I was looking for, there's a copy of Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. I took a look at it, it said Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, 1997. Wait, what? This must have been a mix-up or something else rather weird. Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island came out in 1998, not 1997. I had to do some research on my laptop about the movie. When I researched the movie on Google, I went on... I went to Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island Wikipedia page for some info on the movie, and I found out that the movie was being made around 1997 and early 1998, and then it was released in on September 22nd, 1998. I decided I would look at reviews of the 1997 version of the movie before getting the movie. One reviewer said they rated one out of five stars. One of them comments said. Very dark, too loud for kids. Another uh, comment said, Why does this version of the movie be more spirited than the 1998 version of it? I ignored the comments, thinking there would be more comments about. There was only two comments, but that was it. I downloaded the movie, I plugged in my earbuds in my phone. As I looked at the screen, to my surprise, the cover was a bit different. The cover had Scooby, Shaggy, Velma, Daphne, and Fred. It also had Luna, Lena, and Simone, and. Uh, Jeff Seberly on the cover, along with some zombies in the background. After the movie was finished downloading, I played the movie. It was all start with the intro of the movie. The intro started with the gang solving mysteries, as they usually do in every Scooby Doo movie. When the theme song was playing in the background, Scooby Doo Doo, where are you? We got some work to do now. When the gang solved the mystery, as usual, the green uh, scene. Then transitioned to Daphne sitting in front of the talk show host. And that's how we solved the mystery of the Mo Monster. One of our most frightening mysteries. Everyone clapped for Daphne as the talk show host cringed at the story. No wonder you. No wonder why you become a reporter, the talk show host said to Daphne. The, that Mo Monster almost flies you up into a pizza. And then we would have Coast to Coast and Daphne Blank going on a second season, I might add. I never miss it. Thanks, Chris. Daphne smiled at the talk show host. Why I started to fear was the fact that the monsters we saw always turned out to be bad guys wearing the costumes. Got a little boring, eh? Chris asked. Uh, Chris asked. Daphne was able. No. Kidding. In fact, that's why the game went their separate ways, Daphne replied. Except for Fred and me. With him being said that the sh uh, scene didn't show Shaggy and Scooby watching Daphne on TV with her own show. They both sighed in sadness, and the gang wound their ways. The Shaggy and Scooby continued his job until they walked into a room full of food. The next scene showed Velma work at the bookstore when she signed at the TV show. Uh, TV showing Daphne and her TV show. The phone rang, and she answered it. Hello, my answered the phone. She noticed that Fred was on the phone. Fred Jinky, sounds great. Count me in, Fred. Velma cheered. When the next scene shows Scooby and Shaggy, who, but who both got fired after eating food in airport office area, Shaggy answered the phone when it rings. Hello, Shaggy is on the phone. Fred, Zoic, busy? Nah, Scooby and I were just gonna take some time off. Raft, we replied. The scene transitioned to Daphne standing at the front of her house. Fred pulled up to her house. Sorry, I'm late, Dash. Traffic was brutal. Fred said as. She stepped out of the van. I was starting to like this 1997 version of the movie. It was just like the 1998 version of Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. From what I remember. Then when Fred opened the back of the door of the van. Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby shout surprise. It was Daphne's birthday. So the gang all hugged her. Thank you guys. Daphne smiled. It's, gosh, it's great to see you all. I hope you don't mind. I asked the gang to come along, Fred replied as Daphne hugged her best friend. Hey Fred, this is the best birthday ever, Daphne replied as Scooby lifted her face. It's great, <laughs> it's great to see you too, Scoob. Fred chuckled. Velma then showed Scooby and Shaggy the box of Scooby snacks. The two had a couple of snacks, but they were big stale. We're going to New Orleans to solve a mystery in Louisiana, Fred announced. New Orleans has the best food in the world, Daphne added. And the best ghost, Velma uh, also added. I hope so, Daphne replied. Well, let's get going. Hold it. Just one more thing, Fred revealed the Mitsubishi logo by pulling off Daphne's TV show banner off of it. Yes, Daphne. Yes! Velma cheered. Mystery is back in business. With that being said, all the gang went out. I'll go out to 
goes all real ghosts and monsters, but no luck, as you can tell. The ghosts and monsters, they, they fight our people in costumes. But Daphne was bumped out by the top, by this. She's the gang where in Louisiana and New York, New Orleans. I got a show to do. I need real life ghosts, Daphne said. I want a house that is really haunted. There is, a voice of a woman said. I work as a maid. And the house is really haunted in the Moose Car Island. Cheeky! Velma was amazed and surprised. My name is Lena. Lena Dupree. Lena said to introduce herself. Fred Jones, Fred replied. This is Velma Dinkley, Daphne Place. Moose Car Island? Daphne asked in confusion. Where is that? Is it by you, not far from you? If I heard a Moose Car died on your island, the spirit said it said to haunt the place. Lena replied. Nah, that's just fake. Uh, Fred brushed it off. It pretty much is some guy in the pirate costume screen others off. Ghost is real. If you're too scared to go, Lena replied. If you want to check it out, I'll be leaving soon as soon as I finish shopping. The way Lena said those lines sound like she was flirting with Fred. Lena's kind of cute, Fred said about Lena. That made Daphne not happy. Fred, Daphne scowled. Jinkies, Velma explained with a shock. In Moscar Island, we had a bit some people going missing on the island. No bodies were found in decades. Sounds creepy, Daphne replied. We better go before Lena takes off. The scene cuts the shaggings to be eating a huge sandwich as they always do. Come on, you guys. We've got a hot house to check out, Fred said to Shaggy Scooby. As the scene faded to the game following Louine, uh, Louise in their pickup truck to the driving to a ferry boat, the gang drove down in a ferry where a man who was driving the ferry named Shock was telling the gang stories about pirates and people go missing. Moonscar Island is the most famous pirate has bite you, Jock said as he talked more about the stuff. It was more confusing about what happened to the island since he was talking about it too fast. Here's the island, Jock said as he led Lena and the gang out of the ferry with their vehicles. Hey, hang on, the roads are bumpy. Lena warned. The gang followed Lena through the roads of Moose Heart Island. It was very creepy. The spots were all around and looked like he was from the 1930s. The ten more times creepy than that it already is. But this is as the movie showed the house was coming into view. Wow. There's one haunted house, Daphne said as Fred hold the hold the video camera carefully every moment. When he saw a ton of cats around the property, Scooby went nuts by jumping out of the mission machine and causing a riot. Scoob, leave him alone, Daphne called out to Scooby. Scooby, stop! Shaggy called as he grabbed Scooby by the collar as soon as he bumped into another woman who was walking out of the house. Who brought this, this, this dog? A woman shouted with short blonde hair ass as she pointed at Scooby. The gang apologized to the owner of the house, well, Scooby. Then they explain about what they're doing here. So Lena explains to the owner of the house what's up and the woman introduced herself as Simone. Your house is beautiful, Daphne said. How old is it? Fred asked. It's been in my family for many years, Simone explained. It was a pepper plantation, so the high pepper grow on the island. Simone, your house is really... Velma began. Haunted? Simone asked Velma. In our dinner sentence, yes, it's an old house with restless spirits. We can look around if you want. I'll be more flattered if you're gonna. I'll be more flattered if you're gonna tape. With that being said, Lena explained about how the new gardener named Bina will fix the damage. So the gang looked around the house while Bean Shaggy snuck into the kitchen to eat as usual. So far, the 1997 version of Scooby-Doo on was interesting. It looks like. The 1998 version of the movie, but since this was a beta version, I got more interested in what's going to happen next. The scene shows Shaggy and Scooby eating the food as they always do. <sighs> to do when they see food. The gang went in the lounge area where Shaggy and Scooby screamed. They screamed because of the fact the peppers were so hot. A few minutes later, Shaggy and Scooby screamed again. Peppers again, Daphne asked. Rah, uh, rats, Scooby replied. Ghost riding. The place is hot. Shaggy explained as the words. Where it was, get out! In the 1998 version of the movie, but in the 1997 version of the movie, it was more disturbing. I paused the movie and looked at Roddy more closely. It said, get out or you die. Now that's just been more disturbing for kids' movie. This is the beta version of the movie. 1998, Scooby Doo on Zombie Island, so I brushed it off. Matthew explained about the spirits about the mansion being haunted with a cold breeze. 
throwing through Daphne. She shook her head. God, who who the hell opened a window? Did Daphne the the Daphne said sounding like she had a freak out. And while Barry and the kids show, it's not too bad. But there's usually never swearing, Scooby Doo. I can see the writing. That the writing also says something else on the, the first writing. The second writing said, "They are coming for you." Now this is even more disturbing than the first message. I knew the house was haunted, so stuff like this was to be expected. This is great stuff for what? Daphne was getting excited at this point. She was into scary and freaky stuff. I was into that stuff too. The haunting might just get. The haunting might just be. The haunting might only just begin. But when the sun set, the ghosts get more creepy. Simone explained as Fred. Then Velma, Velma floating in the air. How, how is this possible? Uh, Velma was getting weird out by this. So Shaggy Scooby pulled Velma down the round. The next scene fades to the gang looking for the camera footage. To take a better look at the what, what made the writing disappear. Fred zoom into the footage to see a ghost of Morgan Moonscar. Simone showed a book of the gang of what happened. We didn't scare. We don't get scared that easily. That he said, and in Simon in her tone. The next scene transitions to Scooby and Shaggy having a picnic outside near the garden. Then Scooby sees cats again and chase them. Goes on again. The scene goes on for a grassy fisherman. Looked at Scooby and said, "What well, being right? You are mutt get out, Mojo." The fisherman said. Now, Mojo, the fisherman hunting warthog in the nineteen ninety eight version of the movie. But in nineteen ninety seven version, Mojo wasn't a warthog, but he was seen as was a tiger. He chased Scooby around past Shaggy, who turned around to see the tiger running really, tiger running really fast. Zoinks! Shaggy screeched as he saw the tiger. So Scooby and Shaggy ran it fast as they can and ditched the tiger. Soon they fell in a deep hole. Scooby and Shaggy looked up to see the tiger roaring at them as the tiger walked away. Shaggy and Scooby then looked at the sky to see zombie patterns where, which was, which is Morgan Moonstar groaning and moaning. Shaggy and Scooby jumped out of the hole and ran away screaming until they bumped into the gardener. The gardener was pissed off. What the hell are you doing out here ruining my flower beds? Ben asked as angry as Velma along with Daphne and Lena and Simone Fred appeared from the bushes. What's going on, guys? Velma asked. We can hear you screaming from the house. We saw a pirate moon car. He looked like a zombie, Shaggy explained. Oh, dear, Simone said. Shaggy Scooby took in to see where they found a zombie and they got to the hole and looked inside. Are you sure you saw a zombie, Fred asked? We know a zombie when we see one, Shaggy replied. Velma asked the gardener some questions, but he ignored them and walked away. He is kind of cute, Daphne said. Well, maybe we should get going, Fred suggested. Daphne replied that she didn't want to leave yet. Simone then offered the game to spend the night in her haunted house. The gang agreed with that. Lena said that she would get the dinner started. The scene faded to Lena showing her game to the room. Shaggy asked when it's dinner. We are at. I never know. I never knew anyone in my life who would eat much of you guys. Lena chuckled when Lena showed Fred his room. She, f she flirted with Daphne, which was. Which she wasn't happy with Lena flirting with her best friend. Thanks, Daphne turned around as she walked in the room and then see that Lena was gone. Now Daphne was wise to her fool with tears as I can see that. As I could tell, Daphne was starting to cry. I had a feeling that Lena was stealing Fred away from her. She had a crush on the Fred at the same time as Daphne does. The next scene shows the gang in the dining room when Simone suggested Scooby to eat somewhere else. Lena made a suggestion for Scooby and Shaggy to eat on the mission machine. And they agreed to when Shaggy and Scooby were in, seen inside the van eating dinner when Scooby was being pissed off as a cat being a nuisance. Shaggy drove the van down to the swamp on the quiet area to eat. As they eat the hot pepper, the scene goes normal where Shaggy and Scooby ran into the dirt, a swamp and to drink water when green light is showing the point down in the water. Where Shaggy and Scooby looked up to see a zombie crawling out of the ground and begin to see more zombies around the place. Shaggy and Scooby were able to dive down a few miles when, when the mission machine got stuck. I could see the zombies looking really decayed as they had blood on their clothes and their flesh was being sewn. As this people were serving, but I ignored it. The next scene shows 
Back at the haunted house when the gang kids had to be screaming, The hauntings are just beginning, Simone said at the gang at the dinner table. We better go find and check and see, Emma said. Fred agreed and said to Simone and Lena they will be going to find Shaggy and see. Simone agreed when the next thing transitioned to Fred, Daphne and Vilma walking around the clock. They run they soon run into Spew, who said that he heard screaming and mentioned that he ran into Shaggy and Spew again screaming at the screaming about the zombies. <laughs> I'll go with being you, Vilma said, as she went with being you and Daphne and Fred go were both going together. The scene was just going well as normal when Daphne opened the van door and screamed. The scream sounded like Daphne was being stabbed by a killer. What the hell is that? Daphne screamed as she, she was she saw a light up in her. I thought this could be a dead body or something, but luckily it wasn't. Fred climbed into the van and had a closer look. Well, I guess the boy is like your girlfriend. Dinner, huh? She's not my girlfriend, Dad. Fred replied. I just uh, say I enjoy her cooking. Daphne then let off Dawson grab her shoulder as she grabbed the arm of the one and threw it over her shoulder. Daphne, are you? Fred called by Daphne Brandy. I can help myself, thank you. Daphne replied as Fred got a closer look at the zombie pirate. I think it's the gardener, Fred said. We'll see about that, uh, Daphne said. She tried to pull the head off the body. Shaggy speed then showed up and freaked out the pirate zombie. It's very much a mask. It's the cheesiest one I've ever seen. Fred said, but Daphne jumped off the head of the zombie pirate. It feels real, Daphne said, and Fred gave it a try. With a few pulls, the head popped off, revealing some blood squirting out of the neck. Now, that was just more disturbing. Why did I, why did I have blood in the kids' movie? It, it, it's real, Fred was surprised. The headless body got picked up, got up, picked off his head, and placed it back on. Daphne and Fred were surprised to see more zombies appearing from everywhere in the swamp. Shaggy and Sweet ran away again. All of a sudden, Daphne and Fred heard a blood curtain scream. The scream was coming from Louise. It sounded like she was being gutted alive. It's Louise. We left her and thrown underprotected. Fred said as uh, Fred said as he and Daphne began to run until Fred dropped the video camera and the switch scan and disappeared. Fred. Fred and Daphne began to run away from the zombies. The most disturbing part is where the zombies decay and turn blood. I'm starting to get more nervous about this freaky 1997 version of Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island. But I mean, why would there be blood in the kids movie? I continued on the movie as the terror time again song play began to play as the two duos ran away from the zombies. It's terror time again. And you just might die of fright. Fred and Daphne... Uh, friend Daphne, uh, Daphne and Fred meet up with, uh, as the two duos run away from the zombies. Daphne and Fred meet up with Bew and Vilma again, explaining what, uh, what, what's going on. They were all floating in the air when they were picking up what's going on. Another thing we faced is Shaggy and Scooby playing with the dolls. Both sides of Fred. Whoa, I wonder who made these dolls, Shaggy asked, as he and Scooby soon chased off by bats, soon run into more zombies. The next scene shows Daphne. Fred, along with Bijou and Velma inside the Simone's house. They're looking to uh, Lena and Simone, and Fred falls through a staircase. Lena is playing about the zombies spotting her and Simone. She also said that the zombies dragged Simone away. Lena was in Fred's arm at this point. Don't worry, we'll find her, and it's gonna be okay. Fred confirmed, uh, comforted Lena as, as he, along with Velma and Lena and Velma walk, uh, Daphne walked down the tunnel. By the time they reached the voodoo ritual room, it was a, it was a trap! It's too late for you now, Simone chuckled evilly. <laughs> he and Luna used to be used the voodoo dolls to tie up Fred, Daphne, Binyu, and Velma up. I'm sorry, Fred. I really do like you. Lena smirked evilly. What What are you planning to do with us? Fred asked. This is very simple, Simone explained as she turned her face to the moon dial. Soon the moon dial is pointing on this moon dial. Uh, the moon side point. Is reached on the moon dial, then the Samara ceremony would begin. Simone replied, You won't get away with this. Daphne ran as she struggled to get free as Simone and Leah both chuckled. <laughs> We've been getting away with this for 200 years. Simone laughed as <laughs> she and Lena started to transform into the werecat form, which was only part of the transformation. At least Shaggy and Sweet were so, are so free, maybe, Fred whispered. We heard that, Fred, Lena scoffed. Those two pain in the asses. We don't give a crap about making 
you know, all about them, you know, then his, what, what the hell are you planning to do with us, Fred asks. Every heart moon we drain life force of the one who, every heart moon we drain the life force out of those who come on the island so we can be immortal, someone explained. This is more haunted stuff than I ever imagined. Daphne was horrified along with her friends. The next scene shows Shaggy and Scooby at the dock with the fairy as they see Shock up before them. I'm happy to see you all, Jack. Uh, Shawak chuckled as he tra transformed into Werecat. Shaggy and Scooby started to run at this point. And I mean, uh, I'm not going uh, uh, Shaggy Scooby changed, uh, changed Shaggy Scooby to his mom. The next scene shows Mom, along with Luna, Fred, Bunu, and Daphne, Velma, and Nish in the, in the voodoo ritual room. Boozar, he caused all of this. Uh, as the Mom started explaining the gang, the history about the, about how Moonscar caused Mom and Nina to be who are they are now. The flashback was taking place around 700 years. Simone explained that she and Lena used to be settlers in the island, planning to be their home. But when Moonscar and the pirates show up in the land, they trash settler stuff and change the most of them into the bayou. But this flashback was even more darker than the 1998 version of the movie. You get to see more settlers held back by some of the pirates who held them back from the camping spot. Lena and Simone were hiding in the tree to see the settlers were in the bayou. Crocodile heart eating the settlers inside the water to swap the game a bloodbath screaming. Cries also can be heard. Lena and Simone gasped as they saw the settler being eaten alive. Another thing Simone mentioned was more disturbing. Simone explained that some of the settlers were being violated in many ways. So yeah, we're not gonna say what happened to what they're not gonna say what the pirates did to them, so you can imagine what happened to them. Uh we put a curse on the pirates to destroy them as they destroyed our island. I wish it was granted, Simone explained, as she and Lena became cat creatures, killing all the pirates after but after the cat side tower and cars them as well. Over years we'll still come to our island, Lena explained. Another flashback appeared with the spice traders starting a pepper plantation house when the next harvest moon showed up. Lena and Simone explained how they lure people to the island. Just like how you lured us, Fred explained. And those zombies are dead, so too dragon. They're trying to warn us, Daphne says. As another cat shriek is heard. Sounds like Jock has found your friends. Leo growled. The old man wanted to be immortal, so we gave it to him. Simone replied as the next scene shows Shaggy Scooby running until the cat creatures appear in front of them. Going somewhere? Jock picked up Shaggy Scooby looking at them. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue. Shock then roared at Shaggy Scooby as the zombies walked toward the cat creature and started to attack him. Now, Scooby, it's our chance. Shaggy and Scooby ran away as they as soon as they can. Went in the cave and knocked Simone and Lena away from the tide of friends. Look out, Velma said as Shaggy and Scooby looked to see Simone and Lena getting up and go. I had enough of this fucking dog. Simone growled. I was surprised that Simone actually said the F word. Some, uh, I had enough of this freaking fucking dog. Simone growled. I was surprised that Simone actually said the F word. Simone and Lena then transformed into fully into cat creatures and started chasing after Shaggy Scooby. Velma grabbed one of the voodoo dolls and freed herself, but then she freed her friends from being tied up. The zombies find a way inside the cave as they attack the cat creatures. Shaggy, the zombies are the good guys, Daphne said as Shaggy and Scooby were being chased by Jacques, who grabbed them. Scooby saw one of the peppers and sprayed the juice on Jacques' eyes, who groaned in pain. Then someone grabbed Shaggy and Scooby by and began to drain them of life as they pulled away all beside by Daphne and Velma, who made the voodoo dolls out of them. Someone ran up to Daphne and looked her in with angry eyes. You know what, Daphne Blank? I'll just kill you, like, in every way. A creature does in a horror movie. Someone raised her right paw to da uh, to Daphne's face. To a good swipe across the face, Daphne groaned in pain as she looked at Simone with the scratch mark on her face. Her left eye was cut and her eye was bleeding. Fred, along with Bayou, made sure the Chinese Scooby were okay, which they were good, thank goodness. Daphne was being scratched to death as Simone as Daphne trying to keep the beast off her. Simone was attacked. Daphne, like a hunter from left... Left for dead, 
would do, Get off me! Get off of me! Daphne screamed as Fred shoved Lena out of the way and kicked the cat creatures off of Daphne. Shock and Lena, along with Simone, walked apart Fred. Wilma knew when they started smoking and decaying. The curse was broken. They soon became the bones as zombies did the same. What is happening to you, Shaggy asked. Your spirits are decaying, Shaggy, Bill Munch blamed. They can finally rest in peace. With all that being said, all the zombies and cat creatures were gone. The gang then soon turned to see the beat-off Daphne. She had a scratch and a bruise on her. I saw a big gash was showing on Daphne's leg as her clothes were stained with blood. Hey there, Daphne, Fred said as he held her his best friend. We'll get help. We can, Fred, Daphne asked. Weakly. Yes, Fred asked Daphne as I started the water. You're my best. Fred, Daphne <coughs> coughed as she looked at Fred, holding one of her hands. Friend I ever had, Daphne said. No, Daphne, don't do this. I can't lose you now. Fred sighed and sobbed. Fred, take care of the game. Daphne replied. I love you more than anything, Daphne said as she closed her eyes. Fred started to cry along with Elma. Screen shaggy and Daphne were all crying to the loss of their friend. I started to cry a little bit myself. I didn't think the movie, well, I, I didn't think the movie would call, kill off Daphne, but luckily they didn't show the part in the 1998 version of the movie. In the last scene, Treasures of the Fred, looking at the sun, said, I'm sorry, Fred. Someone said she tried to cover her friend Fred. Looking at the sun, said, Oh, Daphne. Fred said sadly, Fred! A voice called out. A bayou appeared and looked at Fred. Look, he's back! Bill stepped to the side as Fred looked to see Daphne walking out towards him. She didn't have a she had a she did have a bandage around her left leg and her huge gash was a lot of scratches. Her left eye was a, able to be open again, but she had a black eye. What's ma what matters was that she was alive. Daphne Fred out, ran up to Daphne and they both hugged each other. When they got close enough, I thought I never see you again. Ben knew I was alive, Daphne said. He drained my room. Thank you, Fred said to Bayou. For saving my girlfriend, Fred and Daphne looked at the sunset and the two finally kissed. The credits roll, and then the phone screen went black to the uh, back to the ice cream store. After watching that 1997 version of Scooby-Doo on Long Island, I was surprised to know that the 1998 version of the movie was dark, but I didn't bet the 1997 version would be even darker. Question I had inside my mind. I'm sure that 1997 version of Scooby Doo on the island wasn't related until at least until 1998. Due to the graphic content and other things, I was too disturbed by the surprising that I decided to show my best friend who loved this movie. I went to bed that night and I woke up to show my best friend the 1997 version of Scooby Doo on the island. She was surprised as a, she was surprised by it as, as I was. I tried to find out about what. Why Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island from 1997 was 10 times more darker than the 1998 version of the movie. I did some theory and thoughts on the movie. One of them was the werecats could be real creatures, and I had no idea. I Then I thought a theory of why the movie was 10 times more darker than the 1998 version of the movie. That I knew that the creators of the movie wanted to kill Daphne off, but then maybe Scooby-Doo and Zombie Island didn't come out in 1997 for a reason. I still... Don't know why the movie wasn't released in 1997, but all I can say is, is all my imagination itself. Now in 2019, I saw the movie on my movie app on my phone. So if you see 1997, though so if you want to see this 1997 Scooby-Doo on the island, you have to come to Tales Flora, as I can't post this on YouTube due to copyright reasons. Do not to scare any young children as a fan or fans of the movie. I do watch. This 1997 version of the movie from time to time, but not as much as I did back in 20, 2017. I never got any nightmares of the 1997 version of the movie, and I'll still remember this movie off by memory. Now about Otto, I'm not sure what happened to him, and I had never seen him again. So that was Scooby Doo on Zombie Island 1997 version. I finally completed. The trilogy of Scooby Doo's 1997 ver versions of the movie. We first did Scooby Doo Alien Invaders 1997 version, then Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost 1997 version. Now we finally finished the trilogy with Scooby Doo Run Zombie Island 1997 version.
So if uh, Shannon and Linus Tony is watching this, if you make any more, just tell me uh tell me in the comments because I will love to read more of these because these are interesting I gotta say. So yeah, um, see ya. Bye.